Alright everybody, so I know that The Chosen Season 2 feels like it just began, but the end is quickly approaching as Episode 8, the season finale, premieres this Sunday, July 11th at 8pm Eastern Time, which if you're in Texas like me, I believe is 7pm Central Time. And they released a one minute preview, a kind of teaser trailer for Episode 8, and we're going to watch that today. I'm going to react to it, and then we're going to talk about it, kind of speculate what we think we're going to see in this coming episode. I have not watched this yet, so y'all get to experience it with me for the very first time. That being said, let's watch the trailer. Okay, like I said, I have not seen this yet. I know that this episode is going to give us a little introduction to the Sermon on the Mount, but other than that, going in blind. Let's see. I'm ready. This is probably the spot. What if no one shows up? What if everyone shows up? I'm going to need time. The crowd is going to be bigger this time, the way the word is spreading. We've been advertising something that might not happen. What if we've all been misled? His obsession with reforming God's immutable law will be exposed. I want my people to participate in the healing of the world. If not now, when? Master, it's time. All right, bring it on. Man, I am excited for this episode. You know, I wish that the season wasn't ending so quickly. So it seems like the majority of this episode will just be the setup for the Sermon on the Mount. And just so you don't get your hopes up too much, I believe that I have heard that this season will end on a cliffhanger. So don't be too surprised if we don't get the entire Sermon on the Mount in this episode. I feel like the majority of it might be him just walking out there beginning to teach. I'm hoping that we do get a little bit of it. I hope that we don't just get the whole part with him just walking out, opening the curtains, and then it ends. I hope that it doesn't end that way, but it might. Um, but I know that they did have the whole Sermon on the Mount extras and stuff where everybody came. But it's always possible, I guess, that they filmed the majority of that for Season 3 at the beginning. I hope not. I hope that we do at least get some of the Sermon on the Mount in this episode. But we'll see. Let's go back through this real quick and just see what we got. So it opens up with um, picking up, I guess, right off where Episode 7 ended. Uh, because if you remember, Episode 7 ended with Jesus coming to find Matthew in his tent, waking him up and saying, Hey... I need to start organizing these things into a structure so I can present it to the people. And so Matthew gets up, and this is obviously just setting up the idea that uh, Matthew's recording this. We don't know that's how it, if that's how it happened um, in real life. But in the show, they're kind of alluding to the fact that the Sermon on the Mount is found in the Gospel of Matthew. So they're presenting it like Jesus is, um, you know, he's giving Matthew the details ahead of time so Matthew has it written down. Um, and then we proceed onwards. Uh, Matthew says that he's ready. And then... Uh, then, did Jesus say anything there? Hold up. I'm just gonna rewatch the whole thing. Let's see. I know Matthew says he's ready. I think Jesus ready? is just looking. Yeah, okay. This Season is probably out. the spot. Okay, so this is, um, we've got Thaddeus and little James here. They're out, obviously, scoping out the area where the Sermon on the Mount's going to be at. And I've seen some behind-the-scenes videos, I think, where they were doing this. Um, they're basically just trying to find the best place for this sermon, which is kind of cool. I like that they're showing the background to all of this setup. Uh, they're presenting it probably a little bit different than how it's presented in Scripture. In Scripture, it seems like it might be that Jesus was just sitting down and people gathered to him. But this is always a plausible reality of how it took place. And uh, I just like that they're showing that every person has a part to play. I think that's really cool. Uh, just a cool dynamic for us to see. Season 2... And now this is where they're talking about what if nobody shows, shows up, up, I believe. If everyone shows up. Yeah, what if nobody shows up? What if everybody shows up? Obviously, thousands of people are going to show up. In episode 7, Jesus told them thousands of people will show up. But they seem to be kind of nervous. Um, this is basically the biggest moment of Jesus' ministry so far. Uh, and so they're kind of anticipating this and thinking, what if nobody shows up? What if it's a failure? But then Mary, obviously, is the optimistic one. What if everyone shows up? Uh, and really, like, you know, 
I, I like the build up they have in all this. It's a really good teaser trailer for sure. Uh, let's see. And then Jesus says, I'm going to need time. I'm going to need time. I'm presuming that means that uh, it seems like he's still talking to Matthew here. I know we've seen some promo shots where they're standing in the same spot. Uh, I guess it seems like Matthew and Jesus just spend this whole morning together. It starts off in the dawn, and now the sun's high in the sky. Uh, but Jesus seems to be telling Matthew he needs some time, presumably, to spend time with God, pray to his Father, and figure out more how to prepare for this sermon. Which, I imagine, a lot of people... That might cause some more controversy, because if you remember back at the end of episode 5... Uh, that caused a lot of controversy there whenever people uh, Jesus was praying for a sermon. We'll see if people treat this as controversially um, as they did then, but I'm assuming that's what he's talking about there. He needs time to pray to his father. The crowd okay. is going to be bigger this time, the way the word is spreading. Okay, so just once again, people preparing. We see the crowd. Might not happen. What if we've all been misled? Okay, so we see growing tensions with everybody. Thomas says, what if we've all been misled? That's interesting to me. I wonder what he's talking about there. Uh, you have this classic doubting Thomas idea. I wonder if maybe Thomas is beginning to think that he's not getting what he signed up for whenever he chose to follow Jesus. You know, maybe he thought that he was going to get one thing, but he feels like Jesus has misled them. I hope not. I hope that he's not in that mental state, but it is possible, and it's probable that uh, a lot of the disciples felt that way, especially because when they chose to follow the Messiah, they most likely thought that they were signing up for a war. Uh, but instead, Jesus is being more of a religious reformer. And so, maybe that's what Thomas is talking about. I don't know, but it seems like he's definitely doubting a little bit. His obsession with reforming gods. I want to know who this guy is. I wonder if that's a... Shimon, the guy that we've heard about a few times, who is the son of Hillel. We're actually going to hear a line from Hillel in just a second. Uh, if you've watched my episode breakdowns, you'll know who Hillel and Shimai are. Um, we talked about them a little bit in depth in those episode breakdowns, uh, but they were also mentioned in the show. They were just the two predominant parties um, of the Jewish ways of thought at this time period. Hillel had died, so his son Shimon was one of the leaders of the Jews at the time. I wonder if that's who this guy is, because it seems like I guess Shimuel and Yanni, they have officially gotten enough backing so that they can approach somebody. Uh, so they might be talking to Shimon. Maybe they're talking to Shimai himself, uh, which would be kind of cool. Um, but this guy seems to uh, be at least willing to hear what they're saying, and he seems to be worried about it. Let's hear what he says again. His obsession with reforming God's immutable law will be exposed. So his obsession with reforming God's immutable law will be exposed. So that makes me think this might be Shimai. Uh, this might be Shammai or maybe one of Shammai's underlings um, who's talking here. Because Shammai, uh, if you've seen my theological breakdowns or uh, or if you just know anything about Jewish history, Shammai was one of the most rigid interpreters of the law. And they've addressed that in the show. So it's very possible that that's who this guy is, but I guess we'll have to wait and see. But they're definitely getting some ground here. Um, things are starting to move forward with the Pharisees, um, I guess, adversarial role against Jesus and then we exposed. see John the Baptist getting arrested so I guess this might be a flashback or I don't know I, I mean, I'm assuming that's John the Baptist it seems like it is but we know that John was already taken into custody before so it's interesting to me um, I was expecting to see this scene because this was in the original shot uh, in the um, in the original trailer they released for season two I thought that this would show up earlier in the season but we know that John's already in prison so I'll be interested if this is a flashback maybe people are talking about it um, and it just like flashes back to it. I'm not sure. Maybe it'll be the opening scene of the episode where we get to see some of that. So maybe it'll, uh, how they do that sometimes, um, you know, they'll, they'll lay the groundwork for something that'll pay off later on. So maybe they'll open up the episode with John the Baptist getting arrested. And maybe the cliffhanger at the end of this will be that people come to arrest Jesus or something. I don't know, because we know that Quintus and them aren't going to like that Jesus is causing such a big stir, especially because in the most recent episode, they warned him, don't do this. Like, don't cause any more trouble. Don't cause uh, any more crowds to gather. And now Jesus is gathering the biggest crowd ever. Um, prior to this, the biggest crowd he's had, I believe, is in season one, episode six, whenever there were a few dozen people gathered outside of Zebedee's house. Now he's got thousands of people coming together. And so the Romans won't like this. And so it's very possible that maybe they use these scenes to bookend the beginning and end of the episode where you have John the Baptist getting arrested and then maybe Jesus being uh, threatened with being arrested. I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen, but uh, we'll see. I'm just interested in how they're going to include this, being that John has already been in prison um, for at least two episodes now. Jesus walking dramatically. I want my people to participate in the healing of the world. 
I want my people to participate in the healing of the world. Uh, this seems to be, I'm, I'm assuming this is Jesus once again talking to Matthew uh, right here. Uh, just telling, trying to explain to him what the purpose of the Sermon on the Mount is. Uh, and whenever you look at the Sermon on the Mount, the main point that Jesus is trying to get across is that it's our hearts that matter, not just our actions. And so our hearts have to be devoted to God, and through that devotion, uh, we will be able to heal the world in a way that's much deeper than just physical healing. Um, but might include that as well. You have this cool shot of the peop the um, you know, all the extras, which uh, the, the frozen chosen, as they call them, because it was really cold when they filmed in Texas that day. Uh, you got them walking through the fog, which is a pretty cool shot. Uh, you got them setting up some more. Let's see what they're saying. Oh, there's arguing. Okay. You got some. So you get some people reuniting here, right? We get uh, you know, John reuniting with his father Zebedee. We get Simon reuniting with Eden, who we haven't seen yet so far. So we're getting some returns. We got some returns in this last episode. We got Quintus. We got Gaius. We got Tamar. We got the paralytic guy. We had um, Yusuf. All these people came back in the last episode. But we get some more from season one in this one. Uh, we get, I guess, Zebedee and Eden and maybe some other people. We'll see. When? Yes, right there. So Jesus says, if not now, when? Uh, well, him and his mother say that right here. When? Yeah, uh, and this is a line that they've repeated to each other multiple times throughout uh, season one specifically, but it seems to be this thing that her and her, him kind of say back and forth, uh, but the phrase, if not now, when, is actually one that was popularized by the Jewish teacher Hallel, who I mentioned earlier in this video. Uh, he was the adversary of Shammai. Uh, and then we have this cool shot of Jesus walking up, um, presuming, uh, presumably to go preach the sermon. Uh, and man, I don't know why, I'm hoping that that isn't the, I hope they don't end the episode right there. It's, I mean, just looking at how they frame it, it looks like that would be a good spot where he opens it and the crowd's there and then boom, cut to black. I hope not. I hope we get to see some of the sermon. I hope that we get some of that stuff, especially because that's what this whole thing's been building up to. But I'm not going to keep my hopes up. I guess we'll just see because, uh, I mean, they can do whatever they want. It's their show. Um, and then right here, uh, Simon's telling him the sermon's ready. It's time. It's time. Yes. That's good, too. I like how they say it's time, and then it cuts to July 11, 8 p.m. Eastern time. Because that lets us know it is time for us to watch this season finale. Uh, so, yeah, there is my quick reaction and brief review analysis predictions for uh, what's going to come. In the season finale, I could be totally right. I could be totally wrong. I would love to hear your predictions as well. And I'd love to hear what your favorite episode of The Chosen Season 2 has been so far. And I'm really excited to talk about this episode with y'all once it comes out. Uh, as is usual, I will come out with my review video as soon as that episode airs. I will watch it, and then as soon as I can get that review to you, I will. And then shortly after that, I will get my... Um, episode, my in-depth episode breakdown to you as quickly as I possibly can. Uh, and then there's some other stuff I've got planned um, that's the Chosen related in between seasons as we await season three, which is currently being funded. Uh, so yeah, there's my quick stuff like that. Please be sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel, turn on the notification bell, comment below, let me know what you liked about the video, what you liked about the Chosen season two, what your favorite episode was. Let's just get talking because I love talking with y'all and interacting with y'all, especially in regards to the Chosen and especially in regards to Jesus and God and the Bible and all that stuff. So be sure to do all that stuff. Share this video with your friends so we can get people talking some more. And um, yeah, my name is David Tate. This has been Now Let's Be Honest About Movies. Be sure to keep a smile on your face and don't let anybody steal your joy. God bless. Father, if it be possible, remove this cup from me. Father, I'm so scared, and I need your comfort.